Welcome back to the wood shop. Just a quick little video here. As it would turn out, in my big uh, project making mini frames, these top bars uh, didn't make enough. I'm not sure what I counted wrong, but I have to make more of these. So what I've done is I've cut out uh, a bunch of blanks and I've grooved them and I'm starting to do these little uh, rabbits on the ends. And I did it on a table saw last time, and it worked well. The problem with doing it on the table saw is that if this dimension here is not exactly uh, bang on the same, then your tenon is not going to be the same width. And that tenon has to slip into the end bar. Okay, so the, the finished product really isn't as important how wide this is, but it really is important how wide this is. So what I wanted to try to do here was I try I want to try to cut the at least the one side of the tenon here uh, in relation to the other side, not in relation to this surface, because that's going to be variable. Uh, they actually turn out pretty good, but not, not perfect. I just wanted to try this, see how it would work out. So what I've done is I've set up my radial arm saw and I've started to cut these. I've got a first cut going on this, so I'll show you how this goes. So what I devised here is I made a jig. And how my jig works is I've got it clamped to the radial arm saw table and I have my dado blade in the radial arm saw here. And you may recall my dado blade is not wide enough to cut this one inch rabbit all in one pass. Uh, so I need to cut that twice which is a big pain, it doubles the amount of work I do. And so what happens here is I've got this fence on the jig and this is uh, a 90 degrees, uh, as perfect as I could manage. And I can deck up these pieces in the jig. A little line here, how many I think I can handle at one time. Okay, snug to the fence and I hold them and cut. And that's working pretty good. I've made my first cut and I'm just starting to make the second one to make the uh, to make that tenon longer. So here's my second cut. It's got a longer tenon on it. That's one inch and that's what I'm going for. It's only cut one side. So what I do when I'm done cutting that one side is I've got little strips here and what happens is when I flip that over, that tenon sits on that little runner here. And see, this is my finished product. So that tenon sits on that little so runner. Now, my, my dado blade references the bottom of this tenon. Okay, so now I can set the dado blade to be exactly the right height in relation to the bottom of the tenon or the other side of the tenon if you care to look at it that way. So the uh, the actual width of these top bars is far less important now. I can now uh, cut that tenon and dial in that width for that tenon using this uh, using this little runner. I'll cut a few here. You can see how the cutting process is going. Thankfully, this dado blade far less noisy than the than the big 12-inch crosscut blade. <laughs> Okay, so now I have the first side of my uh, tenon. That's a, you know, that's a rabbit cut that makes a tenon on the end. And now I have to cut the other side. Now I'm gonna have to dial this in. I need to uh, lower the saw a little because what's going to happen is when I turn these over, that'll sit on my little strip of wood, and this is actually going to sit lower. So I'll start with one of them. I haven't changed the, the uh, sled and the jig. I haven't changed where it sits. 
So in this round, I'm going to be cutting the shoulder first, then I'll cut the end on the final round. Uh, so I'll cut this, and then you'll see that it's if it touches it at all, it uh, it actually might not because it's down as far as it was cutting deep. Okay, so that's more or less dialed in. I use my end bar as a guide. That slides in really nice. It's not as tight as uh, they sometimes are, but I don't think that needs to be terribly tight. I've chosen three end bars to test, just to make sure that the one end bar that I chose wasn't a different dimension. So you can see the little bit that I need to cut off in the third or fourth pass over these. Set those up so that first shoulder and the face of that is sitting. That one's already cut on that little strip. In like fashion, I'm now milling the ends of some bottom bars. So again, I start with a, a blank. Uh, I haven't grooved these yet. Uh, the others I grooved before I milled the ends. It really, the two operations are not related at all. <clears throat> so what I did was I just created a spacer block here to go against my fence. So now the end of the bottom bar you can see that I need to uh, mill that end in just a little. Fortunately, my dado blade is wide enough to cut that in one pass. So that's going to save me half my work. So I've just got my spacer block here, and I've got my radial arm saw set so that it's taking, a, that is actually a sixteenth off there. And again, that I don't need to dial in absolutely perfectly. So I get as close to sixteenth as I can. Once I turn that over, and I'm referencing this side, at that point then I need to dial that in, that depth, for the second side. So uh, I'll do a few of them here, you can watch.
I've got the top of these cut. Uh, because I set my saw up a certain way, I can remove my spacer block. And then <clears throat> for the next cut, this piece will rotate and it will rest the shoulder of this will rest against this little shim here. And it sits down there nicely. It rests on this one as well. And it's, it's tight in there. I've made those shims perfectly spaced so that that is the right distance. And now what I have to do is I have to lower the blade a little uh, to dial in the depth of this side cut. Because it's really going to clear it right now. Okay, so that's dialed in. That fits nice. It's not tight, it's not loose. It'll hold itself on there. And now I'll just rinse and repeat and run all these through again.